It's Friday Night Frenzy, brought to you by these fine local sponsors. Good evening, Western Slope, and welcome to week number seven of your favorite time of the week, Friday Night Frenzy. Boy, this season is flying on by. Just a few weeks to go before the playoffs begin, and tonight was another Great night of high school football in the Western Slope, and it's at Stoker Stadium where we begin. And here are the Grand Junction Tigers fired up for this one against the Cross Valley rival Fruta. And could you ask for a better backdrop for a football game? Gorgeous sunset at Stoker. First play of the game for Grand Junction. It's a run to the left, but the Tigers give it away. A fumble recovery by Benjamin Romero. Stott starts it off hot for the Wildcats, and they take advantage as Amari Wilson punches it in from five yards out to give Fruta the early 7-0 lead. Fruta got it back after a GJ punt, and it's fourth and two here. They try the QB sneak, but Wilson is short. The Tigers get a huge stop on defense, and the very next play, Will Applegate fires it out quick to Noah Watkins. He's got plenty of room to run, gliding down the field and pushed out of bounds all the way down at the 10. But just a few plays later, they hand it off inside, but they cough it up as the Wildcats get it back, and a huge turnover for Fruta and a huge missed opportunity for Grand Junction to potentially tie this game. And Fruta, they don't pass a ton, but boy, when they do, it's usually a big catch made by this man, Connor Vance, with a gain of 27 and a first down. A few plays later, Wilson does it again. It's an easy score for the senior quarterback. His second rushing touchdown of the night. It's 14-0 Fruta, but can Grand Junction muster some uh, offense? Heck of a diving grab here from Tanner Roerig. Boy, they need to get the ball in a number three's hands more. But after a few incompletions on fourth and long, Applegate under fire, trying to evade the rush, but there's too many white jerseys as three Wildcats team up for the sack and a huge loss. And on the very next drive, Amari Wilson with the fake, stiffs arm a defender and all the way to the house. Boy, Wilson is a touchdown machine. All this kid does is score, score, and score some more. Three TDs on the night as Fruta breaks it open to go up 21 to nothing at the half, and Fruta kept their foot on the gas and run away from the Tigers 41 to 6. And still nobody has an answer for Wilson and this electrifying triple option offense. Fruta continues to show that they will run right through you, and they ran through and all over the Tigers tonight. The Wildcats will be looking for a fourth straight win on Thursday when they head back to the front range to face Aurora Central. And Grand Junction is also in action on Thursday as they will host the Bear Creek Bears. Now we kick it over to Chad Roderick, who is down in Delta, checking on the undefeated Panthers. Boy, I cannot wait to see if Delta stayed perfect tonight. Chad, how did the Panthers fare? Well, that's right, Will. The 6-0 Delta Panthers were back home after a scary close game at Pagosa Springs 14-7. Let's see how it went against a good Salida Spartans team. It's homecoming night in Delta, and check out these sweet rides as the Panthers get ready to kick it off here in this one. Now, Salida drove down the field to set up a 30-yard field goal, trying it's blocked. All the players stop, but that's a live ball. Clayton Cryer realizes and gets after it. He picks it up and goes. He almost steps out of bounds there, but he cuts back and he's got room. Can he go all the way? Not quiet as he's going to be stopped up by Salida at about the 20. This sets up the Delta offense. Giovanni Romero gets the handoff, charges his way through, and that's an easy Delta touchdown. Delta strike first. 7-0. And how about another one? The Panthers got the ball back and drive it in right for a 14-0 lead in the first quarter. Great job by the Panthers. Salai to get another chance, but there's trouble with the snap and Delta fall on it. And it's a fumble recovery for the Panthers. Here's Deacon Sheen for Delta. He gets rocked on this plane. Hard to see, but Salai to get the ball back on their on the fumble recovery. And that sets up a great drive. Fourth and goal, Spartans, they need the play here. Ashton Walker, play action, takes it to his left, and he's going to get out of bounds. And the Panthers come up with a huge stop near the goal line. Delta's ball, here's Ty Reed with the shot at the end zone, and it's caught by Brett 
Leho 21 to 0 for the Panthers in the second quarter. They can't be stopped and why not one more for Romero as he bursts through the line. They won't bring him down and the Panthers go up 28 to 0 at the half, but could they keep their foot on the gas here on homecoming night? And just like those fancy cars, Delta is in fact not letting up on the gas, shutting out Salida 48 to 0 to move to 7 and 0 on the season. The Panthers will hope to continue their dominance on October 20th after a bye week at home versus a winless Bayfield team. Now let's turn it back to Big Will to see how the rest of the Western Slope teams are doing. Boy, those Panthers just keep on rolling and thank you, Chan, for that. And oh yes, we've got a lot more to get to. And boy, it was a huge night for the Red Hawks on offense all the way in Falcon. Montrose beats the Falcons and Pitts puts up 56 points in the process. This Montrose running game, folks, is really, really good. The Red Hawks have two games scoring 40 plus and now two games scoring 50 plus. Next up for Montrose, they'll host Coronado next Friday and over in Gypsum. How about this? The Bulldogs grab a huge win on the road and now Palisade, after losing their first five, have won their last two and suddenly have a win streak going. Next up, the Bulldogs will host Summit and the Devils will be in Durango. And wow, how about this? What a win it was for Rifle. They dominate Basalt and hand the Longhorns their first loss of the season and do so in style. 55 to 27 was the score from this one, but boy, the Bears look tough. Remember, Rifle's only loss of the year so far came to an undefeated Delta. Next up for the Bears, they'll host Aspen as Basalt will host Moffat County and the Central Warriors hit the road tomorrow to take on the four and two Loveland Red Wolves. It's an 11 a.m. kick off across the Rockies in what could very well be one of the games of the weekend and over in Gunnison. The Cowboys handed Cedar Edge their third loss of the year 38 to 14 and look at those Cowboys six and one on the year. They'll be in Meeker next week to battle the other Cowboys of Meeker and Cedar Edge gets an off week next week before heading to Esther's Park the week after. Boy, what an incredible week of high school football on the Western Slope. So much action, so much intrigue. I mean, Fruta getting another big win. They get to five and two and Palisade. How about the Bulldogs? I mean, they start the season 0 and five. We took the Joe Romano, the head coach of the Bulldogs, and they told us that they expected to start slow this season. But once this, the schedule started to become more favorable toward the end of the year, the Bulldogs would get some wins, and boy, did they. But that wraps up tonight's epic broadcast. So much action across the Western Slope, and all of it is always right here on KREX 5. But for news, weather, and sports, 24 hours a day, go to westernslopenow.com, and don't just have a good weekend. Have a wonderful weekend.